Hi, it's Anthony from carplaylife.com and in this video I'll be looking at the Brick3 Devo CarPlay AI box from Kybrick. This is an AI box for CarPlay systems. It runs an Android 13 operating system, a Snapdragon 662 eight core processor, will do all the heavy lifting. There's eight gigabyte of RAM and 128 gigabyte of storage. And it comes in a fancy cyberpunk inspired case design. In the box, you get a paper instruction manual. There is the Brick3 Devo adapter itself. There is a USB-A to USB-C cable to power the adapter. And there is a USB-A to C adapter for more modern CarPlay ports. Looking over the adapter then, its case design is the most striking difference from most other AI box adapters that are out there. It's cyberpunk inspired, so it has this carbon pattern texture that sits underneath a clear transparent top casing with the Kybrick logo stamped on top in a contrasting yellow color. On the bottom of the case, the transparent casing continues and underneath you can see all the chips and circuit board inside. Around the edges are some ventilation slats to keep the large 662 chip inside cool and on one end of the adapter there are all the ports and slots to power the adapter insert a tf card for media and updates and there's also a sim card slot for providing the android apps with a dedicated internet connection i ran this adapter on a number of carplay systems which all worked well and as usual i continued the remaining of my tests on my pioneer 93 dab carplay aftermarket receiver boot up time took around 30 seconds which included a short boot up animation before landing on the adapter's Android main menu interface. Unfortunately, I was disappointed to see that the menu didn't carry over the same aesthetics as the adapter's branding. Instead, it mirrors a slightly modified version of what I saw on the Ultra AI Box adapter with a new addition of a favorite shortcut app drawer at the bottom of the screen that you can manually add your favorite apps into. And there's a three panel home screen for navigation, media playback, and shortcuts to contacts and calling from your mobile phone over Bluetooth. Screen input and navigation around the menus are responsive enough thanks to its higher end Snapdragon 660 to CPU that's been chosen for this adapter. The 8GB of RAM will help with multitasking and the 128GB of storage will help with many downloaded apps that you can install from the Google Play Store as well as sideload any Android APK app files. Before you do this though, you'll first need to get this adapter online. Getting online can be done either by connecting to a local Wi-Fi hotspot connecting to your mobile phone hotspot or inserting a data SIM into the slot inside the adapter. The latter is required if you want to provide Android OS apps with an internet connection whilst also being connected to wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. The performance of launching my four test apps, Spotify, Google Maps, YouTube and Netflix was on the faster end of all the AI boxes that I've tested and this adapter was the fastest AI box to load the YouTube app. Whilst jumping into the VLC Media Play app, I played video media off my inserted TF card which showed decent results with its video playback showing smoothly and VLC handled my higher bitrate video well enough also. Both YouTube and Netflix video streaming apps ran just fine. An older version of YouTube is pre-installed, meaning that its menu interface is a little bit clunky to work with, but once your chosen video is selected, the video plays well enough for casual viewing with a very slight audio delay shown in my audio sync tests, but it really wasn't that significant enough to notice in general videos. Netflix also runs and navigates well, and its audio sync was also just fine for just general watching too. I've actually created this spark and this tension between like the Ultra and some Plus AI boxes, this adapter uses Z-Link 5 for its wireless CarPlay and Android Auto connections. CarPlay paired and booted in around 20 seconds. And although this adapter was being promoted as having Wi-Fi 6 standard, the Wi-Fi connection for CarPlay and Android Auto was using only Wi-Fi 5. As a result, this adapter has the same lag and audio delay as all the other adapters that are out there. I did see a hidden SSD running very briefly that had AX or Wi-Fi 6 standard, but it wasn't reachable for wireless CarPlay or Android Auto, and it never really came back online, which is pretty much a shame. Built on Android 13, this adapter runs the most modern Android OS out of all the AI boxes that are selling today. Its pull down menu has been limited, to just a few options and its main setting screen does have plenty of additional options for the adapter, including some display modes, local GPS, 
and setting up a launch app for connecting to wireless CarPlay or Android Auto after startup. Its interface still features the floating menu button interface to navigate back, invoke Google's Assistant and return to the main menu screen. However, it's split screen mode button didn't work for me which might have been a bug with the current version of the OS that's running on it. I found wireless Android Auto was a little harder to connect to. It took a reset of the adapter and also my Android device to fully pair and connect to the Android Auto which took roughly around 15 to 16 seconds. Afterwards interactions were okay but its poor Wi-Fi bandwidth showed a few more issues than CarPlay did with some glitches in audio playback and general interactions also had some considerable delay to them. Overall making Android Auto a little bit frustrating to operate at times. Both CarPlay and Android Auto had no problems resuming audio from a call. Hello? 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 And call quality was slightly higher in volume than normal when recording an audio message over CarPlay. Hi, this is Anthony from carplaylive.com and this is an audio test using the Brick 3 Devo AI box from Kybrick and this is an audio test. Both resumed audio from boot up, however it took a few adjustments in the Z-Link app and general settings on the adapter before the Z-Link app would fire up automatically after boot up. The Z-Link app also has the ability to use the adapter to cast video from your mobile to your CarPlay screen. This requires connecting the adapter to your phone hotspot over Wi-Fi, selecting screen mirroring on iPhone, or using the Z-Play app on Android to cast your video content to your CarPlay display. Audio sync was rather laggy on both platforms, so I really wouldn't use this adapter for casting. With the Snapdragon 662 chipset inside, 2D and some lightweight 3D gaming on this Brick 3 Devo is possible. Test games, Crossy Road and Subway Surfer ran just fine and smooth with no major frame drops or much lag to its touch input. The adapter also supports Bluetooth controllers and remotes, so using these type of devices with games and video streaming apps is possible and a better way than using touch input in some games that support them. I also tried to connect it to my ODB2 module in my car, but unfortunately it didn't want to connect to it. The Brick 3 Devo from Kai Brick retails for $289, which is around £235 and €267 Euros direct from the Kai Brick store, using my $10 off coupon code CarPlay Life, and I'll leave links to the description down below to learn more about this adapter and to buy yourself one. Personally, I was left a little bit disappointed with this one. I had high hopes with its cyberpunk aesthetics. It's Android 13 OS, its fast chipset, high RAM and storage size, as well as its Wi-Fi 6 specification. But sadly, there have been many opportunities missed here. The external design gives the impression that its menu interface will continue this same aesthetic. But instead, we have the same rather dated and old looking interface from quite a few months ago. Android 13 doesn't really bring anything new to the table either, other than feature-proofing the adapter with apps and updates from the Google Play Store. Its fast 662 chipset does improve on some low-end light models that are out there, but it is really offering nothing new against the higher-end competition that's been releasing for some months now, with the only real offering being the advantage of more RAM for more stable multitasking and some improvement in apps and games that utilize it. Its generous 128 gigabyte of storage capacity may be a positive bullet point. However, it will only come into its own when installing large games or locally storing large media files on the adapter. Otherwise, I feel a storage size of this size is pretty much wasted on most people. Finally, there is the elusive Wi-Fi 6 feature, which I couldn't see being used or transmitted in any of my Wi-Fi programs. So in short, I find this Brick 3 Devo more of an Android 13 upgrade and a slight spec bump in its RAM and storage over its Brick 3 Pro model than what it really tries to convey with its fancy aesthetics and promise of lightning fast Wi-Fi 6 connectivity. So if aesthetics is really a primary feature for your next AI box, then you're probably better off looking elsewhere. If you'd like to watch another CarPlay AI box adapter review, you can check out this video here and I'll see you there. Give us a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and comments are always welcome if you have any questions about this Brick 3 Devo AI box from Kybrick. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, bye.